fish on, baby? Yeah. You got a nice brown trout. I think I've got a brown on here. You do. Yeah. Keep pressure on it, buddy. Yeah, real yeah there we go. Rod over my head. Rod over my head. Keep pressure on it. There you go. <sighs> Little brownie. <laughs> Sweet. Good job, Greg. Well, the one thing we love about coming to the Great Lakes is there's opportunities to catch brown trout in several states. You know, all the way from really Wisconsin all the way to almost Oswego, New York. You have really good brown trout fishing, you know, in between certain states have it, certain states don't. Today we're on one of those many Great Lakes tributaries that is good for brown trout. Now, been a lot of pressure here. This this hole we're actually fishing right now, we tried to go earlier, and there were two guys in here. We had to wait about two to three hours. So these fish have been picked over pretty hard, but we're gonna come through here with some stuff, see if we can get a few Great Lakes browns here for you to enjoy. 30 mile an hour winds, it's super cold, the snow's coming tonight. We're gonna see if we can get them before the storm comes in. There's a fish, another one, babies. That's a good oh, fish. Oh, that's a whopper. Take your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put Greg on the fish today. Man. Yeah. Give him the hot my guy, hole. My guide's doing his job. <laughs> you thought you were on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a fish. And you're like, huh? It's real. Use the rod. So okay. you can go down to him a little bit, but keep the bend. You can even All right, go I'm to coming. Here he comes. I'm go trying ahead. to bring him in. He's a monster. Oh gosh! This, folks, is a brown. All right, here we go. We got a beautiful lake run brown trout. Catching them on beads today. We noticed the first one that we caught had a bunch of eggs in its mouth. So we're like, beads is gonna be the ticket and make sure they're coated in some fire gel and catch some beautiful browns like this. All right, locked up on a nice brown trout. This is, what, our fourth hookup in about 10 minutes. Run some beads, coated in fire gel as always, and getting some beautiful brown trout here. Let's see if we can get this one to the bank. There you go, Greg, I'm gonna get close, get close. Come on, get closer, get closer. I'm gonna keep this head up, so get him right in the net. Don't miss him. Oh, I got him. Are you just, are you freaking hooked oh up? Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is pandemic. Oh my gosh, you might as well go quick. Oh man, what we'll do is we'll get this one back and we'll get Greg's to the bank. What a beautiful fish. One gone. And there's another one. This one can go back home too. <laughs> Double. Look at this. Show you this one. Go home, buddy. See ya. Double. <laughs> what a fun morning. Yeah. So we went a little bit here without a bite. Decided to upsize my bead. Went from an eight to a 10 mil. Uh, running a size eight. So we had to increase the size of the fire hook as well. So went up to a size eight. Have a little bit more bite on when we get the fish here. This fish looks a little darker than the last one, doesn't it? Yeah, I think we actually got a buck now. Everyone we've caught so far has been a hen. This might be a little buck. Uh, no, maybe not. I'm gonna come right to you, Greg. I'm gonna get his head up and put it right in the net, okay? Go, go, scoop it. Head first. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, these fish go through a lot of uh, trials and tribulations from a lot of people out here fishing. You can see where this fish has been foul hooked here. And then on the other side as well, somebody has probably caught it and was able to get some of these hooks out of it. But it's very unfortunate the way some of these fish get treated on these creeks. So. Always practice safe catching, be responsible, don't snag, and uh, you can keep these fish coming back for more and more people because they will return multiple times to the creeks to spawn. So today we're out here on the small creek chasing some brown trout around it. Once again, we got our three to six CTS, which is the float rod. It's a custom made rod with a five inch kingpin R2. Um, we have eight pound main line on here, we're running five and a half to eight gram floats, tapering out our shot. You'll notice that 
We have the weights stacked heavier here at the top and really slender them out and get real light down. The reason for that is you always want a tapered leader when you're fishing anything from two to four foot of water that allows your bead as we're running today to get out ahead of your float as you're trotting it down. That allows your bait to look the most natural that it can while it's flowing through the river. So your bead is coming to the fish first, bead and hook, and then they grab it and they'll pull and you can almost feel them bite as it's floating down the river. And I think that helps with setting the hook, getting a lot more fish to the bank. I think we're what, seven for eight today. So we're doing pretty well on that regards. And then here's a couple of the beads that we've caught the fish on. They're all Great Lakes beads. I believe this one is no name. Don't remember the name of this one, but this one's been the best bead on this creek for me. And then this little six mil chartreuse bead. When you're brown trout fishing, chartreuse, greens, and yellows, you can't beat them. They're gonna get a lot of fish for you on the bank. And as always, you wanna make sure that you have them coated in your favorite Potsky fire gel. Today, anise and garlic have been really big players for us. And I think that's allowed us to get a couple extra bites. Changed up the bead again, went even smaller. Last fish was on a 10 mil. Now we went down to a dainty little six mil in bright chartreuse. And I think that was the third drift through the run. We picked up a nice, nice colored up brown. It's been the brown show today. Oh, wow, that's a really pretty one. Do you see that bead in there? Good job, look Fuck at that. you multitasking. Man. Right, here we go, another beautiful brown trout here on the Lake Ontario tributary. Working for them a little bit. We had to constantly keep changing up our bead presentation, big, small, medium colors, but every time we make a change, slap some fire gel on there, we get bit. So now to the business end of things. We talked about the bead, the hook, and the swivel. You want about 18 to 24 inch liter. This is gonna be six pound test. I believe this is Drennan fluorocarbon. Because this is an eight mil bead, it's really important to match your hook size up with your bead. So if you go bigger, you go smaller in hook number, and if you go smaller, you go bigger in hook number. So this is gonna be a size 10 fire hook that we have here, and it's always important to snell it. So if your bead slides, the hook will go up like this and really keep the fish pinned. At least in theory, that's the thought. Peg that bead, and you always want at least two finger lengths above the hook, in my opinion, to uh, optimize your fish hookup to land ratio. All right, we're hooked up here again on another nice brown. I think this is gonna be a good one. I haven't <clears throat> seen it yet. I don't wanna to have to put my feet in the water. This I... water is so cold, and look what I got on here, folks. Man. He's got the good waders. Now this is gonna be the second fish in a row on chartreuse after... Right, chartreuse six mil. Six mil. Before we were using several different colors, up to tens. Yep. Making some changes. Sometimes that's all you got to do to get a bite again. My hand is so cold that I can hardly grip the reel. Mm. Boy, he wrapped himself. Hey, now this is our last brown trout here. In this spot, we're going to head out of here, go grab some lunch. It's been a really fun morning. As you can tell, this one's real feisty. Get him back in the water. Oh. And he's already gone. It's safe. <laughs> you know you're hungry when <laughs> when you're about to go in the yeah. drink and you try to stop the fish from slamming on the bottom today's episode of potsky outdoors comes to you from the great lakes where guess what there's brown trout and tributaries and we're focusing on brown trout because the salmon run is over the steelhead run is happening right now as well but we don't always have the opportunity to chase brown trout and today we're in a region where one of the tributaries had a fairly good number of browns in there now what was interesting is you'll see we caught seven browns today and only one of those was a male pretty interesting but every single brown came on beads coated in either anise or garlic fire gel it was pretty interesting when we didn't have fire gel on things were kind of slow when we put it on or reapplied things picked up right away could be a coincidence but in our mind it's what's called confidence we have confidence in fire gel and you should too now one thing to consider this is not one of the fisheries that Andy Full of Full Fishing Guide Service normally covers. We went out of our element and tried something new today in an area that none of us have really done much in. Just shows you, have a good bead with you. Thank you, Great Lakes Steelhead Company. Have some good fire gel, be able to read water, and you too 
could have a great time catching brown trout here in the Great Lakes. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.